Hi friends, welcome to project time. To get the most out of this, please watch the video from the start to the last second. In this video, I'm gonna introduce this wireless home automation device. It consists of three main parts, a next gen touch display, the panel board, and the main board. I designed the circuit and PCB using Altium Designer, and the boards have been fabricated by PCB Way. In this section, I explain the boards briefly. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB. And in the last section, I will, I will show you how the device works. All right, welcome back. Now I, ex I explain everything one by one. This is the panel board. It's a small two layers PCB board. This is the input jack to connect one of these uh, adapters or power supply. Power supplies. The output voltage of the adapter should be around 8 to 9 volts. A small one with a current of around 1 amp or even lower is enough. I think this one belongs to my old ADSL modem. The output is 9 volts and 600 milliamps is the output current. Okay, let's come back to the board. Okay, this is the controller chip, 80 mega 328, ISP programming interface, regulator with the heat sink, and this is the transmitter, ASK transmitter module, and this is the receiver module. Of course, these two wires are the antennas, and this is the XH connector to connect one of these uh, nice next gen displays. This one is 4.3 inch and capacitive touch and intelligent series and you can see the specifications and the model number the build quality is very nice indeed uh, nothing special remains here just a few capacitors on the back side of the board okay let's go to the main board so, the same as the panel board, panel board, this is the input jack, the regulator, uh, high power regulator on the heatsink, and this is another one to power the microcontroller, the same as the panel board, 80 mega 328, ISP programming, ASK transmitter, ASK receiver, uh, and this is the interface to connect uh, the light sensor, I mean this one, this is the light sensor, okay, and this is this connector. I recommend you to use a shielded wire uh, to connect this sensor to the board, okay. I have explained more in the article because you might use this device in a noisy environment and the outer shield helps to eliminate the environmental noises and if the camera get focus and this connector okay this connector is connect to connect the temperature and humidity sensor i mean this one do you see that so this sensor shtc3 measures the temperature and humidity uh, for the board This is the relay drivers this part and relays and the output connector to connect the load our devices heater cooler humidifier or the lights uh, The crystal I forget to tell you and nothing special on the back side just a few capacitors for noise reduction and that's it hunky dory okay Bob's your uncle let's go to the schematic and PCB all right this is the Altium designer environment if you don't have the Altium on your computer 
There is a link in the YouTube video description that allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. Just you need to fill out a form and when you activate your license, you will see your name here, the same as me. And also you will have access to all of these interesting tutorials. Let's go to the schematic. This is the schematic diagram of the main board. This is the PCB layout, the schematic diagram of the panel board, and this is the PCB layout of the panel board. Let's go to this schematic. The first thing I want to mention that is that I suggest you and I highly recommend you to design your schematic symbols like this. For example, for this complex components, 80 mega 328, I prefer to uh, have each part uh, separately. For example, this is port C, this is port B, and this is port D. And also this is related to the power section. I mean VCC ground, analog power and analog reference. This makes the schematic easy to understand and easy to follow. Because if you just use a big rectangle in the middle of your schematic as a microcontroller, uh, it makes the schematic messy and you might uh, make some mistakes in designing. You might miss some uh, connections like this grounds VCC or whatever. Also in the future, maybe for example, you check your schematic a few months later, then it might uh, you might uh, waste a significant amount of time to understand what you did in the past. Anyway, I recommend you to design your schematic symbols like this, so you never make any mistake in connections and it is much easier to follow. Before I continue, let, let, uh, before I continue let me check this component in the octo part, 80 mega 328. Did you see the speed? It's actually much faster than Google. Anyway, the component is this one or also this one, doesn't matter, both of them is equal for this design. And this part is for the distributors. Let me show you something interesting. The authorized distributors don't have this component in stock, however, non-authorized stocking distributors all of them have this component in stock do you see that even 30,000 31,000 more than 31,000 stock from this distributor do you know why i actually don't know if you know why it's like that so just let me know in the comment section so stock is absolutely zero here for authorized distributors. I don't know actually. So why these distributors have and why this one does, don't, ha uh, don't have this component. Anyway, this is the specifications of the microcontroller. 32 pins and 20 megahertz is the maximum, is the maximum of the uh, clock frequency. Flash memory is 32 kilobytes and so on. So it's a very cool website. You see everything in one page in front of our eyes. Very nice and everything is free. Let's come back to the design and let me go to the PCB of the main board. Okay, the first or maybe the most uh, important PCB design rule in my opinion is the component placement. For example, look at this PCB. Each part of the circuit has its own area on the PCB layout. For example, here is the power supply. It has uh, something like an L shape. Here is the RF part, transmitter and receiver modules. These connectors are on the edge, edges of the PCB to connect the sensors. The microcontroller is almost on the center of the PCB and the crystal is as close as possible to the microcontroller as well as the 
decoupling capacitors and here is the MOSFET drivers four MOSFET drivers and the relay and the power connectors are on the edge of the PCB layout so this means component placement so you should not mix each part with another part for example you don't see a power connector here or you don't see an RF module here okay you should follow this rule in your own PCBs as well another point is that the crystal should be as close as possible to the microcontroller do you see here as close as possible and you should not place any noisy component near the crystal or you should not pass any high frequency track uh, near the crystal or on the back side of the PCB if I show you the back side I used a solid ground plane on the back side of the crystal however never connect the body of the crystal to the ground I mean never connect the body to the ground plane this polygon another point is the polygons uh, themselves I use two polygons in this PCB top and bottom and this polygon helps to reduce the length of the ground pass when you reduce the length of the ground pass your circuit works more stable and generates less noise okay and also absorbs less noise in a sim uh, I made uh, a simple term in a simple term your circuit works better but it doesn't mean that you should draw the polygon all over the PCB on all of the designs for example in this design I have not put any polygon uh, below the relays because the inductor of the relays is a good source of any kind of noise so I put the uh, polygon with a good clearance uh, with the relays inductors the last point is the wires these wires also reduce the length of the ground path and you should use them as much as or maybe what can I say uh, it depends on the board you should use them uh, at least near the ground pins of the decoupling capacitors this is what I mean at least in such a low frequency the board the frequency of the board itself is low but you should at least use some wires near the decoupling capacitors near the ground pin pins of the decoupling capacitors and also below the uh, at the bottom side of the microcontroller okay you will find these sensitive areas to place I mean in terms of ground plane to place the wires after some times all of these rules become a habit for you and you will follow uh, like driving in your PCB and PCB layout design okay let's go to the panel board this is the schematic diagram of the panel board nothing special is here as you know I always publish an article with each project so don't forget to check the article link in the video in the YouTube video description I have explained everything about the schematic and other uh, uh, and other topics in the article this is the PCB layout of the panel board the same as the main board you can see the component placement here is the crystal ISP connector and the RF modules transmitter and this one is the receiver you see the ground planes on the top and the bottom side of the PCB let me show you in the PCB in 3D and there we go you see that a very beautiful uh, 3D view of the PCB and this is the back side nothing special reminds here I think I mentioned all of the uh, important point if you had any questions just let me know in the comment section all right welcome to the test bench now I'm gonna show you how the device works 
So I have connected, connected the panel board and the main board to the power and this is the touch display, the next gen touch display to control and monitor the values. These LEDs indicate the output status or the status of the relays. So when the one LED is on, it means the corresponding relay is on and the output device is on. So the device could be heater, cooler, humidifier, or the home lights. Let's go to the display. This is the live temperature value in degrees. This is the humidity value in percent, and this is the in light intensity in percent also. So from zero to hundred percent, okay? And I have adjusted my desired temperature on, on 25. I can increase or decrease this. The same for this side and the same for the light. So for the heater and cooler, nobody used the heater and cooler at the same time. So I have implemented this button. So this means cooler and the, this means heater. So the heater is red, the cooler is blue, okay? I think it's pretty obvious. So when my desired temperature is higher than live temperature, so the heater is on the first LED. If I decrease my desired temperature, do you see that? Now the heater is off because my desired temperature is lower than live temperature. Let me put this on 25. And the same for the humidity. My desired humidity is 36 and the room is more humid, it's 45%. So if I increase this to, for example, 46, it means I like more humidity and the humidifier device is on. The same for the light. So the activation threshold for the light is 50% or 51%. Let me uh, move this sensor. You see that now the light is higher than 51. It is actually the live value is 61. So the lights are off. It means the ambient light is higher than uh, it, higher than the adjusted one. So the lights are off. And now again, the lights are on because the uh, sensor value is around 13%. Let me show you the cooler. So for the cooler, I just need to press this or slide a little bit. And of course, my desired temperature should be lower. So lower than 22, for example, 20, and the cooler is on, okay? As simple as that. And as you see the activation and deactivation is pretty fast. So one, uh, home automation device is on the table. Use it in whatever place you like. I put all of the sources in the article. So just visit the article. You can order the PCB, download the Gerbers, check the code, check the hex files, and also check the uh, required files. I'm not gonna, gonna tell you how you can program this display because you can find the information. Also, I put the SD card file in the article, you can download that and program your next gen display. Uh, don't forget to encourage me by your like and subscribe and subscription. See you in the next video.